And this is another quick video, just because they all are at the moment. This is a uh, little uh, four-way uh, video distribution system setting up for the museum displays. It's currently playing a few uh, relevant uh, videos for the museum. So forgive my pauses, it's been a rather long night. I was up till about 2 a.m. sorting this out. But uh, we see here we have adjustable gain output for each of the different units. Um, you can't see much on this short lead, but I can adjust the gain to compensate for long leads. I've got, uh, this is all laid out on a piece of MDF at the moment, uh, just temporarily till I get everything sorted. Um, and you can see here, this is one of these um, TRRS leads. They're a tip ring ring sleeve um, connector for the Raspberry Pi 2 and up that gives you uh, composite video as well as your stereo audio out uh, on the one connector. I've got a four-way relay here. Uh, this will be used for simulating button presses on the TV so that each individual TV can be turned on manually. Uh, this is a nifty little J-Car kit amplifier that performs a number of different tasks depending on the configuration. In this case, is working as a nice booster. Um, and because the grounds are shared, I'm running just a single wire off here. I'm running mono audio because most of the TVs in the museum are only mono audio. It uh, just confuses matters otherwise and makes the cable a bit cheaper. I'm running just 12 volts DC straight in here and it uh, runs through up to a 5 volt regulator and also branches off to supply 12 volts for both the video booster and the amplifier. And uh, this is a Raspberry Pi model, uh, what was it? It's a Raspberry Pi B Plus Model 2. It's one of the early ones I had kicking around. Um, perfectly adequate, so I don't really need to put a Model 3 in. But what we're going to do here, we have a SSH set up here. I'm just going to reboot the unit and uh, demonstrate some of its quirks. Uh, I've been at this all night. I've actually had to run several different operations to get this to work right. Um, I even have a real-time clock involved here as well, just in case the internet for time sync is not available. Now, we'll see here the relay bank will switch on, and it's going to press for half a second for each one two seconds apart so that all the TVs can turn on. And then up here, we should start OSMC. Sorry about the strobing here, it's uh, composite videos like that. And when that comes up, that should automatically start playing a playlist that will be on loop. We can see here, we've got Cody laid on top of OSMC. Fairly surely, it should start playing one of the playlists I've given it a short delay so it can compensate for the TV's uh, startup screens. Here we go. Here we go, there's an old news uh, broadcast here for an example. And um, yes, yeah, so, uh, probably later on I'll probably remove the module out of this and uh, set it up separately and make a nice fancy clean box. Uh, but at the moment we have a data cabinet, so prying fingers and potential short circuit should be at a minimum when it's inside the cabinet. Uh, when it's working reliably, I'll make a proper box and mount everything correctly. And uh, I might even, uh, because it does occasionally uh, complain about power drop, um, I might replace this uh, USB lead and actually patch directly 5 volts straight in the G GPIO port, uh, which is possible with these. And um, I think that's a DS3233 real-time clock, if I recall correctly. These often ship with flat batteries, if you can see the little tiny battery under there. Um, this one was lucky, the battery had come off during transit. Uh, otherwise, I uh, normally fit a set of wires and put a CR2032 battery on them. But nonetheless, and I also have the all-important fuse here, just in case something stupid happens, which uh, I haven't experienced yet, aside from my own stupidity. But uh, yeah, we'll see this in action, uh, hopefully, at the museum soon.